Hey everyone, Quaglon here. Today I'm going to teach you how to destroy vampire survivors. I'll explain and break down the different mechanics at play, and once you understand these, you'll be winning almost every run. In fact, you'll be able to start winning as early as your second run. So let's get down to it. In order to win on your second run, you need to start with your first run, obviously. There are a few key steps you need to take in order to get some unlocks which will set you up for success. First, just survive for one minute. Get used to the controls, how to move, and how your weapons work. As you're moving around and surviving, try to take out some light sources. These drop coins, delicious healing floor chicken, and power-ups to help you survive even longer. Destroy 20 of them and you'll unlock a new weapon, the Fire Wand. Beyond this, there are a few extra unlocks you can get if you're feeling bold. To get them, gather 6 weapons, level Santa Water to level 4, and level Magic Wand to level 7. This will set you up with a few extra passive item unlocks. Last but not least, you'll unlock the Inlaid Library stage, my favorite stage of all, if your character reaches level 20. These unlocks all appear on the scoreboard at the end of your run, so don't worry if you don't see them immediately. This is a long list of unlocks, and you may be wondering why unlocking so many items is important. And the reason for that is one of the most amazing features of Vampire Survivors, Weapon Evolution. Weapon Evolution is a game mechanic that changes a base weapon to a stronger evolved weapon using a passive item as a catalyst. In order to evolve a weapon, you must first fulfill two conditions. The weapon you are trying to evolve must be level 8, and you must have the required passive item. Once these conditions are met, any chest dropped from a boss that spawned at or after the 10 minute mark will grant an evolved weapon as its first reward in place of a random upgrade. If all of these combinations are confusing, Reddit user Chaser1807 has created this handy evolution chart and other useful charts that I'll post a link to in the description below. Use this as a quick reference to see what you need in order to evolve your favorite weapons and plan your builds during your runs. Now that your first run is out of the way, spend any coins you've earned in the power-up menu. I recommend getting a few ranks of might if you can afford it. For your character, I recommend sticking with Antonio for your first few runs for the same reason. Damage wins games. Antonio also starts with extra health and armor, making him a bit more durable. I also recommend picking the Inlaid Library level if you manage to unlock it. Once you begin your run in the Inlaid Library, start heading left. As you kill enemies and level up, keep in mind what weapons and passives you are choosing and what can be evolved. For weapons, try to acquire the Axe, Magic Wand, Fire Wand, and King Bible to support your whip. Your sixth slot can be anything you choose. I chose Santa Water because I knew I could evolve it with an Attract Orb. For passives, try to acquire the Hollow Heart, Candelabrador, and Spinach. Bonus points for Duplicator if you unlocked it. Keep on heading left until you find a floating empty tome item on a table. A little trick here that isn't required for this run, but important to know. If you're already carrying six passive items and then pick up the empty tome, you can then exceed the six passive item cap and benefit from seven items. Pick up the empty tome when you feel comfortable with it and continue leveling up. Try to gather all of your planned weapons and passive items, but also try to make the whip the first weapon you bring to max level. The whip evolves into bloody tear and will restore your health when it deals damage. This will help you recover from little mistakes here and there and make your character a lot more durable. So once that 10 minute mark hits, find and defeat the boss that spawns and crack that chest open to get your very first evolved weapon. If you do not quite have a weapon ready to evolve, just leave the chest there until you are ready. It won't disappear. The next most useful item to level up and evolve is the magic wand. The rapid fire blast from the wand always target the closest enemy, which is likely the most threatening enemy, allowing you to keep space between you and your enemies. Keep leveling up and evolving your weapons as you can, completing your build. If you've made it this far, you're ready for the final piece of advice I have. Stop leveling. That's right. Once you've evolved all your weapons and you're no longer getting more powerful, stop gathering experience gems. The reason for this is simple, but not readily apparent. Enemy health is based on your level. 
That means every time you level up and pick up an item that doesn't directly increase your power, the game gets harder. I know, I know, those little gems are so tempting and level ups are so satisfying that it's hard to resist, but resist you must. The easiest way to avoid leveling up is to stay somewhat stationary. There is a limit to how many experience gems can appear on the screen at once. As soon as that limit is reached, enemies stop dropping new gems and instead add their experience into an existing gem that typically appears as a red gem off screen. This means that the enemies closest to you are no longer dropping gems and thus you can avoid getting XP and making your enemies stronger. As you approach the final waves, it's time for a bonus tip! Save some chests and stay near them in case things get hairy. When you pick up a chest, you are invulnerable for a short time, so this can help you recover and survive just a little longer. If no chests are nearby, grab some experience gems to trigger a level up. Once all your items are max level, level ups will instead offer gold or delicious floor chicken. Get some chicken for some quick emergency heals that could save you in a pinch. And now, congratulations are in order for your victory! I hope this guide helped you understand some of the deeper mechanics of Vampire Survivors and will guide you onto victory even at maximum curse levels. As always, thank you all for watching and see you next time.